again, everybody. So, before we actually get into the nuts and bolts of this course, the actual study of American history, I want to discuss with you what are known as the elements of historical theory. Now, these are tools that historians and students of history such as yourselves can use to analyze and interpret historical information and historical processes. And I will be asking you to use some of these elements in your own analysis of historical information and processes as we move through the course. So be sure to pay careful attention. Now there's 17 of these elements of historical theory, and I've broken them down into four different presentations, of which this one is the first. Let's get started. First, life as choice. Now we talked about in the What is History presentation that history can be viewed as the study of change over time. Well, another way to think about it is history as the study of the choices that humans make through the course of that change over time. Now, all human beings have free will and an equal capacity for good and evil. And it's the choices that they make that determine to what degree on either side of that spectrum they may fall. Now, constant choice means change is constant. Again, this goes back to what we discussed in that What is History presentation about the study of change over time. And these choices are the thing that definitively influence that change over time. Now this functions at the micro and the macro levels. In other words, at the individual and at the societal level. Each individual humans make daily choices and societies also collectively make choices on a daily basis. Now every single choice that we make has consequences. Some good, some bad. And it's often hard to discern what consequences will come out of the choices that human beings make. Secondly, the uniqueness of the individual. Human beings are the sum of their experiences. I want you to think about that for a second. Humans are the sum of their experiences. Every single experience that you have influences the person that you are today and will influence the person that you will become in the future. Now some may push back on that a little bit and say, well, what about culture? How does culture fit into that idea? Well, culture does fit, but you have to think how do individuals interpret the culture in which they live? Through experience. We are taught the moral values of our culture through an experiential nature. We are taught those things. and We have to experience them in order to fully realize them. Now, every single person has a unique perspectives that drives their choices. Again, this goes back to what we talked about in the What is History presentation about the multitude of perspectives that merge together and diverge apart from each other in that spiderweb-like nature that influences how the overall interpretation of history is achieved. Every single person is special. You are special. You are 100% unique. There has never been a single person in history like you, and there will never be anyone in the future exactly like you. And this is influenced by all sorts of things, including genetics, one's biological ancestry and makeup, the environment in which one is raised, and the various different influences that environment causes on our interpretation of the world around us, 
and of course the experiences that we have and the choices that we make in reaction to those experiences. Now due to individual uniqueness and the uncertainty of choice, history generally is not useful as a predictive tool. We can discern various patterns in history and we can look at those sorts of things but because we can never predict the exact choices that individuals and societies will make it is very difficult for us to predict the future which is why many say that historians make very very bad soothsayers third the drivers of humanity. Now there are three main drivers. The first is perhaps the most important. It's sustenance. Air, food, water. Three things that all human beings have in common that every human being needs to survive. Survival is instinctual within not only human beings but all animals. People tend to do whatever is necessary to secure these three things, air, food, water. And an inability to secure any one of those three things can lead to all sorts of things like violence, turmoil, etc., etc., as humans try to regain those things that they are lacking. Second, security. Security can be defined as those things that allow humans to live their lives to an acceptable, acceptable degree of happiness. This includes things like government. One of the primary reasons that governments are formed, perhaps the primary reason that governments are formed by people, is to obtain security. Second, family. Family, the bonds of those family members have with each other provides a sense of security. Religion, in many ways, also provides this sense of security. Wealth, clothes, shelter, all of these things provide a sense of security that humans strive to achieve. And without that sense of security, then all sorts of often wild and unpredictable things may happen. Third, immortality, or could be termed legacy. Immortality is the one thing that human beings absolutely cannot achieve. We will not physically live forever, unless, of course, you know, at some point science makes that breakthrough. But for right now, no human will live forever unless you're a vampire but if you're a vampire then perhaps you're not human anymore <laughs> now we all seek some sense of immortality and because we can't physically live forever we search for other means to obtain it some of these means include our children you know that legacy that one leaves to one's children is in many ways an effort to achieve that sense of immortality. Fame. Of course, this one kind of goes without saying. You know, famous people tend to live on in the minds and hearts of people long after they're gone. Religion is another way that humans seek immortality, and particularly in the sense of an afterlife or an eternal life beyond death. That is another way that humans strive to achieve immortality. Creativity, things like art, writing, things of that nature. Physical things that humans can leave behind that will remain in society, in culture, long after they are gone. And last but certainly not least, and certainly not the only other one, but perhaps the one closest to my own heart, is teaching. Teaching is a way to try to achieve that sense of immortality, to 
influence future generations and leave that legacy of knowledge that humans can then work with and hopefully pass along again to the generations after themselves. The last one we'll talk about in this presentation is historical patterning. Now, I'm sure many of you have heard the old saying that, you know, if one does not learn from history, then one is doomed to repeat it. And there is some element of truth in that statement. However, history does not necessarily repeat itself, but it does echo. Now, this patterning is driven to a large degree by those drivers of humanity that we just got finished talking about. Humans respond in similar ways in efforts to obtain those three drivers of humanity. An example of this is in settlement patterns, and this is particularly evident in early human history. Generally, settlements are formed on a hill. That provides protection, the high ground. You know, the, the higher up you are, the further out you can see, you know, if your enemies are coming towards you. It also provides perfect protection from attack. It's much harder to attack up a hill than it is to defend down a hill. Another aspect of this is by some sort of water source, which is one of the reasons that many of those early human settlements, if not most of them, were formed by rivers provides access to water for drinking, for agriculture, for transportation. You know, before the advent of, of, of highways and stuff like that, you know, rivers really were the, the highways that people used to communicate with other societies and other settlements. Patterns exist, for sure. But, the uniqueness of the individual and the unpredictability of the choices that peoples and societies make can skew those patterns, which again is one of the reasons why history is very difficult to use as a predictive tool. It can be used in a general sense, but it's very hard to predict specifically how things may play out just because of the uncertainty of those things. Now, that's it for this first part. Study hard, and I'll see you soon.